Hey, thank you all for being here. Now, listen, if you paid attention to the, the title, it said a conversation worth having, you're all going to contribute, okay? All right, seriously, say yes. Yes, you're all going to contribute. So it's not just going to be Q&A, you asking us questions and we're providing answers that we think we know. Um, we're actually going to be asking the room questions as well. We want to hear from you what your church has been up to, what your church is doing. Um, but how about this? Let's, uh, let's pray. Let's, let's do that. Matter of fact, who wants to volunteer? This is interactive. Yes, yes, yes. Come on up here. Yes, see? You see what he just did? Follow his lead. <laughs> Follow his lead. Hey, let, pray for us. We pray in the mic for us because yeah, we have an online community. Okay. It is an online thing. Awesome. Let's go. Okay, cool. All right, let's pray. Father, I just thank you for this breakout session. I just pray for all the hearts in this room that they be open to hear. Everyone online as well, everybody listening, that we would just receive and be open about online church and just learning where we need to go and what's next. And Holy Spirit, just show us what that looks like. Um, show us what it looks like to be authentic in online church while using technology and keeping our hearts still open and ready for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Let's give him a big hand. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Hey, so listen, thank you again for being here. We're going to ask that... Um, Again, please, please, we want your input, we want your value, we want this to be a conversation. Um, but I want us to get started this way, right? Who has a Bible? Phone, Bible, anything? Who wants to read Hebrews chapter 1, not the whole chapter, just verses 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Come on up, come on up. Yes, got the big Bible, the family size. Yes, Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. The reason I want to start this way is I want to begin with God. That's who, why we're here for. This is his work. And I think the author of Hebrews gives us a unique perspective about his character and nature and how he works that's going to help set up our discussion when it comes to church being online. All right, would you read verses 1 and 2? Long ago, at many times and many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he's spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom he created the world. Awesome. Give her a big hand. Thank you. Yep. This is interactive. You're going to clap. You're going you're gonna to share. All right. Here we go. So long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers with the prophets. Now, here we go. Long ago is showing us God's track record, right? This is who he is. At many times, meaning he's consistent, right? He's constant. And in many ways, meaning he's creative. When it comes to discipleship, because this, this is really all about, Mr. Bucky would talk to you a little bit about that. It's, it's about us creating a space and time when it comes to accomplishing the vision and mission of our church that we are speaking constantly and also creatively. Can I get an amen for that? But in these last days, he's spoken to us by his son. And so it says he, God speaks through the prophets, but then his, also his communication is progressive. First, he uses the prophets to preach the word of God. But then it says through his son, the actual word of God, teaching the word of God. So it's something about communication when it comes to discipleship that's also progressive, right? But the fullest expression of God's creativity is in Jesus because, and I want to start that way because we talk about church online and we talk about things, it's easy for us to go systems. It's easy for us to talk about technology, what type of cameras you use. Listen, if we don't have Christ, we miss the whole thing. And the fullest expression of the creativity, the power. Uh, later on, said he's the express image of God. He is the radiance of the glory of God, right? That's who God speaks. And so if you love Jesus and you love your people, I believe you're accomplishing your church's mission. We're just going to have a conversation saying, now that we're all online, what does that mean? Or if you're even online, right? And I start that way because this, 2020 came and all of us had to go to online, whether it was on purpose or not, right? We went there by default. Well, now this conversation is, well, how do we be there by design? We're going from default, this is just what we all have to do. As Pastor Lee said earlier, we all went to zero. And now we're trying to move to doing it by design. And here at Radiant Church, and when we were thinking about what we're even going to title this thing, we're honestly like, hey, um, we're trying to figure this out. So we're not like, hey, come hear how well we're doing it. No, we're going to call this a conversation because we need to learn. 
we're literally trying to figure this thing out. <laughs> All right? Don't let the cameras fool you and the smoke. Ooh, we're trying to figure this thing out. <laughs> we are literally trying to figure this out. So this is a conversation that we're going to have with you so that we can learn from one another. And I'll just start by saying this. <clears throat> we were there by default. Radiant Church has taken the position that we can make disciples online as well. We're going to be there by design. We're going to try to communicate consistently and, create, and, and creatively pointing everyone to Jesus. And we're trying to figure out by being led by the Holy Spirit, how can we make radiant disciples to Jesus Christ in the online platform? What does that look like practically? <clears throat> My name is Tim and I am the uh, executive central ministries. That just means I do whatever Pastor Lee says. Uh, but I'm one of the pastors who sits on a senior team and I'm overseeing online. So we don't look at this as just a creative thing, this collaboration, but this actually sits at the table. This actually sits at the decision-making table. This actually sits in a spiritual seat. We have a position um, that we are praying through. We're actually right now thinking about hiring an online campus <clears throat> pastor, right? Because we don't pastor computers, we pastor people wherever they are. So we're going into that. The first hire I made was Mr. Bucky here, Mr. Bucky Thornock. He's our online campus manager. Soon to be, I'm being prophetic, online campus pastor. Uh, but, um, <laughs> but we hired him to actually be there. We're actually meeting with people any way that we can. We were there by default, but now we're there by design. What does that actually look like? And so here's where we're going to start. Some of you, you may have been here, you made that jump as well. It's not just something you kept going since 2020. It's something you're saying, this is what we're doing 2021, and in the future until God says something different. I would like to take a moment now to hear from one of you or a couple of you, what have you done in your church to go from default, this is what we just were doing, to by design, this is intentional, this is what we're going to use as a vehicle to achieve our vision and mission of our church. So who's the first one to go? Give me a minute. Yep, come on up here. Come on up here. You got to speak into the mic. I'm sorry. We have online um, community. Want to make sure that they are included as well. Yep. <laughs> no, that's fine. So even that interaction, we're still learning. Oh, yeah. We're not just hosting people in person on site. We're hosting people online. Right? Even that. Right? Give you an example of what that looks like. When we're doing our broadcast service on Saturday, we're trying to not say tonight. Right? God, do it tonight. They're going to watch that on Sunday morning, right? We are learning, okay? There's been times where Pastor Lee said, hey, scratch Saturday. We got to go live on Sunday because we said tonight, 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 all right? So please speak into the mic during this time because that will allow us to serve those who are worshiping with us online, okay? All right, so what has your church done? How about tell us your name, um, your church, kind of where you guys are. That's your testimony. You want to hear all that? Uh, but then also, <laughs> right? But then also, what ways have your church intentionally now have lived in the online space and trying to accomplish your mission and vision? Uh, my name is Justin Burrell. I work as one of the production people over at Road to Life Church in St. Joseph, Michigan. Um, one thing that we have done to intentionally go um, online, rather, obviously, like you say, we all went there by default. Uh, one thing we have done is we actually built a studio room called the Ivy. Um, it's I'll be honest, I think it's really dope. Um, it's got infinity wall, we got crane cameras. Like it's it, For the church of our size, it's really, really sweet. Um, and Thursdays are all primarily online. We've made it a semi-hybrid. Um, you're talking like max 40 to 60 people can fit in the room, but that'd be like you're packed in there like sardines. Um, so we have like some two bleacher seatings, a couch, just kind of made a real cool um, kind of a vibey room. Um, but again, that's primarily all fit for online. So when you're speaking um, or leading worship, you're not leading worship to the room, you're leading worship to the camera uh, because those are the people we're primarily trying to reach. So that's one big pivot we've made. Awesome. That's good. Can you give him a big hand for that? That's a real big pivot, right? <clears throat> Please take notes. You've heard intentionality and you heard investment. Anything you want to do that's going to be excellent, that's one of our values, is going to take you being intentional and actually making an investment. I don't want you walking away and discouraged saying, man, we can't afford an affinity room. We can't do it. But it, it is going to cost you something, the same way we would do to create an experiment, a experience and environment for those who are in person. Yep. You want to share as well? Yep. Tell us your name, the church you're at, and quickly share how you guys have been intentional with your online community. Uh, my name is Ben. Um, I'm from Hope Church in Spartanburg, South Carolina, or Spartanburg and Greenville. And um, one, our church has always kind of streamed, as far as we can remember. And before that, we were on TV, we did some TV stuff. But like when COVID hit, we had to just broadcast. And so, starting in 2021, we decided to actually launch an online campus that 
instead of people just watching what's happening in the room, we created opportunities for people to address the online campus directly. And so we, we host people in the beginning with like a welcome during the countdown where people in the room would see a countdown on the screen that people watching online would see two hosts kind of interacting, encouraging people to press in during worship and stuff like that. And then the same thing happening during um, offering, because you guys know, like, not everybody tunes in right at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock when worship starts. The, the numbers kind of, yeah. And so uh, we do a second welcome and then do an offering opportunity during that time. And then we cut back to the, the sermon. And then after the pastor preaches, um, we pick up where the pastor leaves off and actually communicate and actually do like an online altar call where... Um, we actually pray and we have our teams trained to like pray if we're getting a word of knowledge or something like that for someone watching online we can communicate it straight there and uh, we actually walk people through that process instead of them just watching what's happening in the room we're able to address people directly and so that's one a couple things that we've we started doing starting in 2021 it's been pretty cool yeah yeah thank you ben thank you i love what he said one thing we're trying to do is even in our communication, but even in our mindset, people are not watching us, they're worshiping with us. So he's creating an environment that's not just you're watching something, they're ministering to people, whether that's through people hosting, speaking right directly to them. So that's one thing I want you to understand, like that we've made the decision that people can actually worship God at home. They don't have to be in person to do that, that that the family is actually the primary way that God wants us to make disciples. And so he's providing his church, Hope Church, providing experience for people to worship, not just to watch. Can I hear from one of one of the ladies? Oh, I'm a single lady. You don't have to be single. But um, I love you guys. But any any of our powerful women of God want to share about what you're doing at your church or something that you've seen going from the, um, default to design? Yes, you're right here. Yep. I think I'm the oldest one here. Maybe. I've lived a little bit, but Bucky, I'm Saturday Night Mary. Oh, Mary. Yeah. Mary. Yeah. Mary. Yeah. Mary. Yeah. Mary. And I go here to Radiant, and I'm a grandma and a mom, but I am also a college professor, and some years ago I teach for a Christian college, Spring Arbor University. I don't know if we have any grads here, but I started teaching online and when they first asked me to teach Zoom, I was like, oh, I didn't know I was signing up for this. Because, <laughs> you know, I knew enough about computers to be dangerous. But that has really morphed. I meet with, you know, I teach my classes online, and I meet with my students and mentor them and minister to them online. I belong to a women's ministerial group, and we meet monthly to, to speak online, to talk about, you know, difficult situations me, we may have with folks that we're ministering to and, and bolster one another up. And I also mentor other social workers online that are Christians. And meeting with them one-on-one -on -one online has really been profound. And I didn't think that kind of an intimate, prayerful relationship could happen, but it can. Because when Jesus is in it, it works. Come on. Come on. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Again, we're going to break this up into 15-minute sections, so my 15 minutes is almost done. But <clears throat> I will say this. Thank you, Miss Mary. For people who are maybe, I don't know if the online thing could work. How about this? In the Bible, they met in caves. Like, we can't, I think 2020 at least has taught us in, in a humbling way, we can't control the medium to which God wants to use to reach people. Why not take advantage of every medium, of every vehicle? Listen, you don't have to be an online lover to love people. You just have to love people and use any tool God gives you, right? So notice, we haven't talked a lot about like, this is the web, <laughs> and coding. No, we're not talking about that. We're saying if, if you want to love people and, and, and reach people where they're at, God has given us ways and technologies to come and, again, consistently and creatively show them who Jesus is and point them to him. Right. And so now I'm going to have Mr. Bucky. He's going to go kind of transition. And then again, he's going to make this a conversation as well. So keep taking notes. Please continue to be involved. Great. As mentioned, my name is Bucky. I've been at Radiant for about a year now. And part of why, Mary, this is the first time we've actually met in person, because the only times we've interacted has been online. 
And so that, that's pretty cool. Uh, I actually get to have a, quite a few of those interactions where I meet somebody who's been serving with us in our online campus. And then it's like, oh, wow, we've been interacting and we've like, I've shared stories about my, my son. I, I, so it's just uh, very surreal to have those moments. Um, so as Pastor mentioned, uh, when we're doing online church, it, we're not ministering to a computer screen. We're not ministering to some avatar. We're not ministering to some digital uh, profile, right? We're actually ministering to people who are on the other side of it. We're mis- ministering to families. We're ministering even to nations. Uh, even within this last year, we had over 60-plus nations that were involved with our own services. I know with yours, uh, it, the different services will impact different areas, different regions. So we're impacting outside the four walls of our churches and beginning to uh, interact with people, families, and even nations. And so one of the things that I was just uh, thinking through as we uh, are bringing this conversation in is why do we want to be online? Why, why do online church? I think it's, it's a very, it seems like, oh, well, of course, that's where the people are. Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a service that's available. It's a, it's a resource. It's everybody else is doing, and there's all these uh, different reasons why. But I think it's very uh, purposeful for you to ask yourself and your teams of, like, why are we going online? Why are we on there? And, it, and there can be a myriad of, of answers. It could be simply like, hey, we're on lockdown and this is the only way that we can meet. And after the lockdown, we're going to go back to in-person because this whole online thing just doesn't work for our congregation. Or maybe it's like, hey, we want to do a hybrid model. Or, hey, we want to actually look at this as a, as a real campus to be able to provide uh, a, a worship experience, a church experience for people across the nation and even to the nations. But in all of those... If your answer doesn't start with Jesus being glorified and people being discipled, I think we start getting into uh, what I would call digital consumerism. We just put put out content. Yep. We're just putting out content for content's sake. And if you don't know this already, uh, this generation has plenty of content. And we have plenty of content creators. Any one of you right now could go on, grab your Instagram account, TikTok, uh, there's so many different apps that you can go and create content and it's going to live forever on there. We have TikTok preachers. They're preaching false gospels, but they're up there preaching. <laughs> there's not a shortage of content. But I think what we can actually bring into this realm is culture, intentional culture. And I think the base of intentional online culture is going back to the roots of discipleship. If we see the person on the other side of the screen as someone who is being discipled, then we're going to think about it a little differently. Because I would think that you'd think about it in this way. Even as we've been talking about, we've been, we've been automatically talking about mostly Sunday morning services or weekend services. Uh, online churches a little bit more than that, actually, because people don't just interact with us on the weekends. People don't just, even in our church buildings, if people only interacted with the church on Sunday morning in your church building, then we have to really reevaluate, are we effectively discipling people? And so it starts to ask the question, okay, what does it look like for this person on the other side of the screen, regardless of your situation, whether it's by default that uh, because of, of COVID lockdowns, you're, that's the only way you can reach your people, or because you're wanting to do a hybrid system or launching a campus, you have to ask yourself, how am I discipling this person, and am I effective in doing it? And so going back to that, that question of why am I online, am I online? I'm online for that person. And I think some of the things that we've discovered is uh, the people that join us online are not the people that would normally darken the doorways of our churches, our buildings. We're actually beginning to reach into people's lives that we wouldn't have formally been able to uh, reach into because they were so afraid to come into a building. Uh, we're interacting with people who are in nursing homes. We're interacting with people who are in other countries. We're interacting with people. We, we have a, a, a lady. I'm sure she's watching online right now, Miss Jeannie uh, from Welch, Oklahoma. She joined us online, and uh, she she was looking for community. She was looking for people to encourage her, and so she joined us for our, our weekly prayer meetings and got plugged in, and, and then she was able to plug in with our uh, uh, Be Radiant class and she and so many of the different ways that we have to for people to uh, join us online. And we were, we've been able to walk with her. She joined a small group. She, uh, uh, she's just a, a, a lady from Welch, Oklahoma, joining a small group that's uh, meeting online from here. 
we're discipling people. And I would say uh, uh, the challenge is, is I would like to say that we've been doing it by design, but it's been mostly by default in that sense. And so now we get to jump in and begin to ask the question um, of, of how are we going to do this intentionally? I would say one of the, the pieces of doing this intentionally uh, is the issue of agreement. So in Amos 3.3, it says, do two walk together unless they have agreed to meet, unless they have agreed to do so. Uh, if you don't know this, people online have a lot of content. Uh, even some of the people that join us online, they're listening to, they're listening to Jensen Franklin. They're watching uh, Creeflo Dalla. Like they've got everybody that they're, they're watching. And then they also join with us. There's, uh, I think, taking them to the next step of discipleship is taking them to a place of agreement. Um, and what I mean by this is, how, how can we agree on what their next step is? How can we help them find a next step? And that might look different for each of you. One of the next steps that we've put in place is, hey, you're joining us on a Sunday or for a weekend service. We're streaming prayer meetings every morning, Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. Hey, your next step, hey, can you agree to come and join us for one of those morning prayers? We've got people online. Come and watch and worship with us and pray with us. There's a great next step. Or maybe someone's like, hey, uh, you want to get plugged in and start serving? We have a, it may be called different for each of us, growth tracks. We call it Be Radiant class. Come and get plugged into part of the team or join a small group. We provide all of these things that aren't just about the Sunday experience, aren't just about the weekend experience, but it's furthering their discipleship process. And every person's going to come in at a different Different place, but you have to get to this place of agreement. We have to agree that you want to go somewhere and you want to do it with us. We agree that you want to go after Jesus and we want to help you get there. We want to help you go deeper in your relationship with Jesus. And so we provide services, we provide resources, we provide content. And content, I made it sound bad, content isn't necessarily bad because content disciples people. The Bible is discipling people. The Bible online is discipling people. Your online services that are recorded and just living online, they're discipling people. There are people that will go back and watch your services and get saved months, years from now. It's going to disciple people. And so um, the the question, and to turn this into a conversation, I got a little preachy. Get it, boy. Get it, yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the question I, I really want to bring into conversation is, um, I, I've mentioned a few ways, and, and again, we're, uh, we're trying to figure out how do we disciple people effectively? How do we go into those next steps, draw them closer to Jesus, and come into some of those agreement points? Uh, some other things that we're working on, uh, uh, launching watch parties, where people are actually in their homes, streaming the service on their TVs, and inviting their communities, because they need community. It's not just about the individual. We also need them to be in community, and yeah, we, we love that it happens in the chat, but they also need to, they need to bump shoulders with some people. They need to share a meal. They need to actually have a face-to-face -face conversation. Um, and some other ways, we're, we're working on launching some meet and greets where weekly we're going to be setting up Zoom calls uh, or, or uh, Zoom calls where people will sign up to come and talk to one of our pastors or one of our uh, online team members, and they're going to have conversation. And the goal of it is... Hey, Mary, thank you for joining our worship, our worship services. Where are you from? Tell me your story. How can I help you get involved? Where are you at in your journey with Jesus? Hey, that's awesome. Here's some great resources. Hey, you should join so-and-so's group. Here, let me get you connected. They're going to follow up with you this week. So intentional things like that. So the question I have, and, and uh, I'd love to hear, is like, uh, how, are, how are we intentionally discipling people online? Or do you, do you, maybe you have an idea, or maybe it's something that you're doing right now that you would say is intentional discipleship in the online platform. That's good. This is when you interact. Yes. Yeah. Come on. I would say the one thing that's on my heart is that we have to have an online pastor, that there has to be someone that knows these people, that knows that Mary tunes in every week and gets to know that online community. There's like two, maybe two to 300 people come in person on a, on a Sunday for us, but five to 600 watch online. They're not a second-rate community. They are members of our church. 
So we need to find a way to get them plugged in. Are they at home because of a health thing or is it because of convenience? Someone has to be in charge of, you know, getting to know them. Why are they at home and how can we get them plugged in? No, that's huge. I mean, even as, uh, to be honest, we're, we're working on this as well, like to, to see how do we pa actually pastor these people and make ourselves available. Uh, the, cha the challenge, maybe it's a personal thing, but the challenge is like, am I available to people? Am I available or have I made myself so busy and so full with trying to do online church that I forgot about being available for the people? And so creating those intentional moments, um, and it, I think it's, uh, and it can look different for each church, it can look different for you, but maybe even looking at like your pastor on call, how are you creating pastor on call moments for your online people? Uh, is there submission forms? I know that's probably a great way to, uh, the, and I think the awesome thing about all of this, there's so many free resources now to be able to do this. You could do video pastor on call. Like, how incredible to be able to sit down with somebody and pastor them face-to-face, -face, and you've never met this person, and it could go sideways really quick. But how real, raw, and intentional. Any other thoughts? Yeah, come on up. Hi, I'm Carmen Gibson, Radiant Church, Kentucky. And one thing that has really worked for us is we have an online care card. Um, and people that are watching online have the opportunity to fill that out if they have care needs. Um, and it's been incredible to see the amount of people that um, I follow up with those so that we can minister to and care for. Um, and um, just one testimony is um, a, a lady that watches from Ohio. Um, her husband um, is sick with cancer. And um, we, are on, we are her community. And so we've been able to walk through that with them um, through some really hard, difficult days, um, even being online. So we pick up the phone and actually call people um, and just interact that way and yeah. to in involve them. So That's it's been awesome. really good. Awesome. Phone calls. Who would have thought? <laughs> Here we got. Uh, one more. One more thought for anybody? Yeah, come on up. said I think we're, we're in the same conversation we started with um, really defining the the priority and the value of it and so it started with a pastor like okay it was a media guy that we had who that was his heart deep down inside and the Lord had actually began to already initiate that anointing in his life and so we restructured everything we brought people on staff to actually position him in a place to develop people for that space and so he is now building, um, essentially, we talk about like the steps that people we want to take into these new levels of discipleship and relationship with people to yeah. learn more about Christ. So we have these defined pathways that we've evaluated as successful in the physical. So how do we take those physical spaces now into the digital and make them just as impactful, just as meaningful? Yeah. And that's a little bit of a wrestle. We, we've been going back and forth with the corporate worship setting. Like, how do you, how do you create that for somebody yeah. in a digital space because there's something su so supernatural that's happening that but then wrestling with the limits of what we think God can and can't do so we've been really um, having great conversations on those on those levels but ultimately it's connecting people with people so we're trying to leverage technology that allows us to get face-to-face -face with people so there's apps now that work like texting you can actually video chat a conversation and that video chat can actually be going on for an entire month and it's back and forth little small conversations that you're having videos so we're leveraging that um, all of the interaction that happens in our comments during services you know i think in in to my own guilt uh, in past you'd let people talk and then you're like oh man great interactions happening but now it's like no, no no we have to dive into that interaction and then challenge people pray with people and then okay what's the next step they're taking yep. then your growth track is online you connect those to a small group that's online then geographically finding people to connect people with people and then now what we're looking for is like okay if you've got a thriving group that started in digital space now they're meeting together could you actually birth a church from that group that's going there and then giving them a pathway to even do that or even connect with the local church that you know is a part of your network that's like hey here's a thriving church right next door that you guys can connect with because people need people yes. and i i absolutely agree with the value that are, there is in, in exchange that can happen on 
between screens and online, but there, there's something very unique face to face, yeah. and we want to cultivate that. So we've really got to wrestle with what's best for people and make sure that we don't shortchange them with any kind of substitute. So. No, I agree. No, that's beautiful. Um, I, I wanted, last thing I wanted to say, and just to uh, wrap this piece up, is uh, I think it was, it was great, and I think a few people hit on this, like the, the pastoring side. People are connected in, in, to, a, to a pastor. They're, they're sheep that need a pastor, to, and we are, we are entrusted by the, chi the, 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 the chief uh, uh, sh shepherd who is going to lead and guide us, and, and they, they need us to be connected there. We need to find ways that we can connect with them, care with them, pray with them, love on them, um, provide needs when that needs to happen. Uh, but some other things that just to put on your radar, not to overwhelm you, but thinking about like the church experience that we have in person, how can we provide it, it, some, if not all of that experience for someone, no matter where they're at. So think about this. How are we baptizing new believers in the online world? How are we doing communion? Right now, it's like, hey, grab some bread and some water and uh, whatever you got. How, uh, how, do, how do we do baby dedications? How, how do we help people know that they're in a community that's committed to the upbringing of their children? Um, all of these different things, start to think about those and don't get overwhelmed as, man, I've got to do this. No, you get to. Man, this is an opportunity. You could, we're working on getting prepared to go and, and dedicate some babies in other cities and other states. That's such an opportunity. An opportunity to love on people you never had an opportunity to do uh, to love on before. And so thinking through that and being excited about it because God is going to move through it. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Bucky. Um, before uh, Landon comes, he's going to get into some pragmatic things, social and all of that. But here's the thing, <clears throat> and I need you to be honest. I need you by raising your hand, not just, if it doesn't apply, it doesn't apply, but I want to see if I'm not the only one. Has anyone thought through discipleship with the online community actually challenged what you do in person? Let me rephrase that. All these questions around face-to-face pastor on call, discipleship thing, what's your process? Has anyone ever, has the online uh, conversation at all touched home what you, knew, what you do normally, right, at all, right? So let me ask you this question, right? What's your discipleship process now? And not do you know that your staff, do your people know that? Know what's interesting? The online community doesn't have the luxury of unclarity. Do your people know why you do baptism? Do your people know why you do communion? Or did they ready? Or did they just show up and watch? But in the online community, we're saying we're going from viewership to discipleship. And we 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 gotta be clear. We gotta be super clear. But I wanna give you grace because sometimes you may be thinking, and oh, we need a shepherd, we need a shepherd, we need a we need we need someone to come in and pastor this. And you hire him and you hire her, and then you give him that position. And this one, before you go, hey, we need this, 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 this from you, ask yourself, are you doing that in person? What's your in-person pastoral care look like, <laughs> right? What does your in-person groups look like? But online, it ha listen, we have to vet our online group leaders like crazy. Like, so like they're like, applying for the CIA or something. Why? Because we haven't seen them. Thank you for being awesome, Miss Mary, and normal. Yeah, so you're, you're doing good. You're making us look good. But, but, ready? but in person, does someone just show up to your growth track? You only have one conversation with them, a coffee, and then you putting people in their home? Ooh, I'm preaching now. All right, so, <clears throat> so seriously, think about that, right? And so for us here at Radiant Church, we just, the pastors got together. Pastor Lee led the meeting. He was like, you know what? What is discipleship here? And a lot of that came from as we were trying to figure out discipleship out there, right? Think through how you're discipling people. Think of how you're going from viewership to discipleship, from just showing up to actually being in community with people, someone coming alongside of them, walking with them, and maturing them in the gospel so they're growing up in Christ. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Mr. Lane, I want you to come and do your little section here. Sounds good. It's a big section. <laughs> it's a big, big section. Yeah. So uh, my name's Landon. I am Radiance Media Manager and Copywriter. So I work alongside these guys a lot, you know, Church online is on social media. You know, you're on YouTube, you're on Facebook, Vimeo, all those, all those good spots. But just want to share, you know, some practical 
um, things around digital engagement and social media that all can relate to Church Online, and then want to open up to see what you guys have been doing um, throughout this last year that's been crazy and just crazy. It's the best word for it. Um, so also, I'm usually behind the camera and not in front of the camera. So this is very stretching for me. So some grace would be great. Um, but no, super, super excited to be here and share share some of my heart. Um, so first with digital engagement. Um, I'm a part of our creative and communications team. Um, so we serve all the departments in our church. So I'm media manager and copywriter. I help out with website, all that stuff. We have a actual digital engagement um, guru named Ron, who's amazing with all things like ads and analytics and all that good stuff. We have graphic designers. We have um, a creative lead. We have a videographer, Elena, crushing it with that awesome contraption she's wearing. Um, and yeah, we just have, have an awesome team that we all work together. We um, run with projects together and really just communicate, communicate, communicate really well to, you know, get the tasks done to help keep this thing running. Um, so that's how our team works, and not all churches are like that or have, you know, the capabilities to have that many people and, you know, multi-campuses. That adds another dimension to that. So, you know, not not all churches have to follow that plan. You know, not all you know, ministries have to follow that type of, you know, organizational chart. Um, and that's okay. You know, we're not all, you know, supposed to be like an elevation or, you know, all these different, different organizations that run different. You know, God has placed a calling on your church, on your, on your staff, on your department. And, you know, you just run with what you have and, you know, we we shift things all the time. And our team, you know, as we've grown as a church, our team has grown. We started much smaller from even when I joined staff a year and a half ago. And we've we've grown in numbers and um, we've continued to add add people to that and just doing our best to serve uh, serve online and everything well, the best we can. Um, so I want to jump in a couple quick things regarding advertising and analytics. Um, we, regarding advertising, really be purposeful. That's a really, really big thing behind it. Don't just run an ad because you have some, something coming up, you know, like really, really pray about it. Think, you know, what is God going to do through this? How, how can we use this to, you know, reach people, reach people well? Um, if you guys didn't know, there's something called Google Ad Grants for nonprofits um, that gives you up to $10,000 per month. Um, so I don't have a ton and ton of details about that, but really I would encourage you to look into that because um, we use it really well for awareness with just, you know, everything from weekend services to water baptisms to child dedications, both in person and online, you know, just, you know, making people aware of Radiant Church and what we are doing. Um, yeah, free money. I mean, you can't, can't complain about that. Um, another thing with advertising, um, something to consider if you don't have an in-house like resource, you can always um, outsource to a professional. There's a lot of um, organizations and companies that will even run those nonprofit ad grants for you. Um, so if you don't have the capability on your team to do that yourself, there's a lot of great resources out there. A um, couple things with analytics. Um, another great Google thing, Google Analytics. Um, great insights into demographics, location data, um, to see who is viewing your content, which will then help you target those ads that you can end up running to make sure they're being as effective as possible. Um, last thing with that, I would say really be intentional about setting up time to review those analytics, to review where people are joining from, not just the total number and leave it at that, but what age group, what 
you know, literally all all the subjects really narrow it down so you can target like oh we have a lot of single women watching from Grand Rapids let's target things there and you know really really strategize behind that like just as you review weekend services or review prayer meetings and different events review these cuz it will help you grow and it will help you reach your online church community um, so now into my favorite, social media. Um, so really the Lord has placed on my heart, which didn't know you guys are going to be so much on discipleship, but uh, having your social media be more of a pulpit and less of a bulletin and really, really focusing on, you know, just just engaging and discipling your your audience, you know, not just posting to post, you know, not just because, oh, that'll look good with the theme and, you know, you want to look great, you want to be excellent, all those things are great, but really, what's the why behind your posting something? Are you doing it to disciple? Are you praying before you post? Are you praying about the people that it's going to reach? You know, it's not just you hit one button and it's done, you know, that's going to show up on hundreds and thousands of different people's screens and that one post, that one, you know, sentence that you write in the copy, like, that can make someone check out your service. That can make someone, you know, come and attend on a weekend. And, yeah, there's just just a lot around, you know, j just don't post to, you know, you get your weekly weekend invite in, you get your prayer meeting invite, you get your water baptism coming up, but no, like, share share what is being preached on the weekend, share clips, share, you know, excerpts from what is, you know, what's Pastor Lee saying, what's, what's your pastor, what's your pastor saying, and have your, your social media reflect your church. Um, another thing is um, look at it from the user's perspective. You know, sometimes we get in our processes and we get in our own heads about, you know, this make this makes sense to me because I've been doing this for so long, but to a first time guest, your website might be a disaster and might be impossible to find certain things. Your social media might be posting content that does not relate to to them like you think you think it does. You know, your your processes aren't their processes. So really think of it through the mind of the consumer, of the one who's gonna be seeing your content and give them prompts to engage with it. Give them questions at the end of your posts, you know, saying, what was the biggest takeaway from from the weekend? Share share your thoughts, we'd love to hear. And then share those, share those testimonies, share those, share those stories that come in through social media because you know your other online people will see that, oh, this person from Oklahoma or wherever, Arkansas, they they watched this service and they they had their life changed. They got baptized in their bathtub. Like, I want that, you know, I want more of that. So, you know, that can really, really encourage someone. So sharing, sharing that content that, you know, makes sense to the consumer and makes sense to who you're directing it to is just so, so important. Um, excellence. Excellence is something that is a part of the Radiant Way. It's, you know, something that we, we strive for in every facet. So, you know, whether that's the photo you're posting, if it, you want it to be as good a quality as can be. Your copy, you want it to be as engaging as can be. You want it to, you know, really impact impact someone, but you want it to be done well. Like, if you're worried that you might have spelled something wrong, run it by someone else. Download Grammarly, you know. Read through it two, three, four times. You know, nothing worse than spelling something horribly wrong and having Pastor Tim get an email because I spelt something and yeah, we don't want that, you know, that's, that's not good. So um, really just excellence in all, always, if it's just an extra 30 seconds to read through it again, extra 30 seconds to make sure it's cropped well, the photo, the, the reel, the audio is good, all those different things, like those 30 seconds can likely be a first impression for someone checking out your church and you know you want them to think that you do all things in excellence um 
last big thing is really be active and engaging. Um, you know, respond to respond to messages when you get them. So many churches and um, different different companies or whatever just have like an automatic response. Like, hey, we'll be with you as soon as we can. And then it goes into a folder and never gets responded to. That's the worst, you know? Have someone on your team who's willing to read those messages, pray about those messages. If you have, you know, other people that can, um, pastors especially, if you have pastors who can like be monitoring, especially a pastor on call, you know, if a big message comes in and, you know, have someone available. Don't feel like you have to take it all on your own, but, you know, just engage with them the best you can on church online comments, you know, respond, make people feel welcome, make people, um, you know, you can leave a like or whatever and think, oh, that's good, but no, like a simple response, like, hey, we're so glad you're here with us. Let us know if there's anything we can do for you. Or, oh, check out this website where you can give us some of your information and we'd love to follow up with you. That, that type of thing. Um, you know, you're more, you're more than Sundays, you know? It's, it's a, full, a full week of, um, of being the church, you know? You have people who, while some come to the church only on Sundays, you know, they'll engage with you throughout the week. They'll engage in your prayer meetings. You'll engage in, you know, whatever you have. So um, just, just keep that in mind. And last thing I would say, be creative and try out new things, especially Instagram stories. They're the best. They go away after 24 hours. Just, you know, experiment, try different things. Don't feel like, um, and also don't feel like you have to like copy what the big church is doing. Like, don't feel like, oh, Elevation did this really cool thing, and oh, Transformation Church did that, or Radiant Kalamazoo did that. Like, you know, every church is different. God has called your church to where they are for a reason, and don't feel like it has to be this unorganic thing. Like, you know, really just pray about what you're posting. Pray about the content you're sharing. Um, and be creative. Try new things. It's, it's great. So um, if anyone have any um, just comments or feedback from the last year that you guys have um, experienced on the social media side of church online. Great. great. Awesome. awesome. No, no, Take great. it away. No, no, thank you, Landon. Thank you so much. <laughs> no, it's <was> great. <laughs> thank you. Hey, so for the last, um, last like 10 minutes or so, I want to add as much value to you as possible. Um, all of us are smarter than any one of us. And so some of you are doing some phenomenal things, tips, hacks, little tweaks that you have made with you, your team, um, how you're engaging people, discipling people with an online platform. This is open for you. If you have a question, feel free to raise your hand, um, say your question, I'll repeat it. Um, but if not, if you have some other things you just wanna throw out there that you've just been doing, this is your time to shine, right? Because as you shine, God gets the glory for that. So who wants, to, yep, yes, sir. Awesome. So the question was, um, what do we mean when we said for the online community um, agreement as we're trying to get people to walk with us? Mr. Bucky. Yeah. As I was mentioning, there's there's lots of uh, content out there. Like I said, we have people that are joining us. for. They're going to five different services online every morning. They're not just coming to our prayer meeting. Um, I, I think the agreement place is when we agree to go to a next step with them. And that can look like different things. Maybe it's uh, helping them get to an agreement point by like, saying, like, hey, could you, would you sign up for this small group? Uh, would you actually give us your information and actually agree to start attending a small group? That's a way to get to a next step. Um, maybe it's through, hey, start going to uh, an online prayer meeting regularly. Finding those ways that they don't just come and consume, but they actually start to uh, come in agreement with the culture and the way that you are. Uh, cultural e eat structure for breakfast every day like you need to have that culture instilled into people and you do that by having them come and start agreeing with it and I think even to the place of what Landon was saying of like there's all these different churches doing all these incredible things we're not elevation we 
we may think we want to try to be elevation, but we're not. We have a different culture. And when we're inviting people in, we want them to say, hey, say yes to this culture. Like if you, if you jive with us, if this is like the, 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 the path you want to go down, the, you, you love our culture, come walk in agreement with us. And when you're in agreement, you can walk together. You can challenge them. You can't challenge someone that hasn't agreed, for, given you that permission, even in discipleship. Another practical way that looks like, so we have a class called Be Radiant on class, the same thing you may have new welcome or you know new newcomers. We do that online, Mr. Bucky and I host that and we meet with people, smaller groups of people, and actually as they take that class, let's say they wanna they take the next step and be a part of Team Radiant, some type of volunteer uh, capacity. They have a pastoral follow-up one-on-one, right? We do that in person, but we also do that online. So the agreement was some of the practical, do you agree? Our statement of faith. We have that a lot. Like people asking us questions theologically. What about this? The tithing question, the this question. And so uh, agreement, another way I would say that is uh, spiritual um, leadership and authority. So if you're going to have an online pastor, hey, are, we, are you going to allow us to shepherd you? Are you going to allow us to disciple you? The same way you would do that in person. And so that's one practical way we look for agreement. We set up next steps. We interview people. We ask them about their story, their testimony. They ask us. And we say, hey, is this a thing? It's almost like kind of like a little dating thing, right? Like, is this a thing? Is this a thing? All right, let's make it a thing. Um, we do that. Yep. How do you broadcast the How do we broadcast that? We use Zoom right now. Zoom. Zoom. I know. <laughs> Scott Lindsay said that was his new curse word was Zoom. Um, <laughs> Use whatever, Zoom, Google Meet, but yeah, we use Zoom. One other question. Um, how, what are your metrics of, like, like measurable as far as views? Do you count just individual, like, unique views? Yeah. So they're asking um, for the online community, they're asking about views. How do we, um, looking at analytics, how do we kind of measure that? How do we measure that? Which one you want to take that one to? Yep. <laughs> this, is, this, is this is all me, yeah. Uh, we've actually done some reshaping of this. We had some ways that we were measuring that, and so I think it's a it, it definitely flows depending on what kind of platform you're on. Um, I the, personally and within what we're doing, we try and look at peak viewership. Um, because a lot of the different platforms have so many different ways to measure how people are viewing. Um, and a lot of the, especially the social uh, sites, they're looking at length of time and the average length of a video on YouTube, Facebook, you're looking at like three to five minutes. And so what, what lengths of time are they looking at? One minute and three minute views. Well, it doesn't tell me how many people actually stayed on my service if I look at the one minute views. But if I look at peak viewership, you'll see this in the analytics within the creator studio for Facebook, uh, within YouTube, um, and even with, uh, I, there, there's some, uh, if you use the free resource Church Online, uh, they have ways to show you these things. Uh, but looking at that, and generally that, that peak view, uh, maybe you have some other incredible resources, but it, it does show kind of a steady line of how people have engaged throughout the service. Uh, and I, we found that's the, the best and most honest way to determine viewership. Yes. So we're a smaller staff, and uh, so a lot of us are wearing multiple hats all the time. And like for me, I'm over connections for our church, but I'm not always able to have a screen in front of my face because I also have platform responsibilities and I'm all over the place. So we're trying to... Uh, empower and build teams for our online community as much as we can. Do you guys have any like SOPs or anything like that that you have in place for teams of how to handle situations, how to handle interactions? Like, hey, if somebody has this question, here's the link you throw to them. Do you guys have like documents and things like that that you've created? Yes, and I believe, check me on this, I believe we can share some of that, right? That we have, like different documents and forms. That's not copyright or anything, right? You're the copywriter guy. But, um, <laughs> um, <laughs> No, that's such a great question. One, it's helping us like uh, repeat the question. They're just looking for different documents and things that we have as you run into different situations, especially if you can't just be on screen all the time, right? So how do you train people? So yes, we do have that. Um, we would love to get, like, we really want this to be valuable, like get that from us. Um, and But also one thing Mr. Bucky has um, helped out a lot, just hiring him as an online campus manager. Um, we have safety teams. You've seen them with the bright yellow shirts. You know what I mean? I like mine to be a little bit more incognito, but oh well. Um, but like that's security. Um, but uh, <laughs> whatever. I don't know. Anyway, um, but Mr. Bucky came and said, well, how are we doing safety online? 
what is our safety protocols for someone going like in on the comment section? Like, what do you do? Well, then he met with one of our, um, our lead security guy here, um, came up with a whole security kind of thing. And now we're giving that to those who serve online as we go through that. And so, yes, we do. Do you need it? Yes. Um, and we're working it. I mean, that's new. We're what, a month or two into that? So, yeah. Uh, I'll answer a little bit more on it. Uh, one resource that you can look, because I know you mentioned like how do you answer certain questions. Uh, we have radiant.church slash foundations. We, there's a 10 part foundations video set uh, that Pastor Lee did. That, that's a great resource to go through. Uh, Pastor Lee also just did a, a sermon series uh, about the radiant culture, um, the, the five, found, five values of radiant. Um, if your pastor can even do like a, like sometimes it's just questions about like, Hey, what do you guys, what do you guys believe? What's your values? And having some videos, videos are great because they're so much more engaging than just, just text. Um, so create some videos, uh, the resource there. Um, also look into things like, uh, knowledge bases. Uh, so there can be websites, uh, where you can create a knowledge base where it's articles and you write those articles out and you, it could be a question of like, who is the Holy Spirit? Have it written out, have it, it it's going to take some time and some effort to put the, into this, but create those knowledge bases and then have those links for your volunteers and your staff. So it's like, hey, you don't have to know the answer. Send them to a resource. And if you don't have the resources, find somebody that does and, and steal the resource. Uh, <laughs> I think that's just going to be your best way of going about that because you can't expect everybody to have all the right answers. Um, and then it, your last, I tell my volunteers all the time, your last default, contact us. Like, give them the contact us form, have them write, uh, fill out their information, have a pastor do the follow-up later. And then give your pastor a warning that you sent someone who wants to explain the Trinity, baptism of the Holy Spirit, and tithing all at once. Um, so please, uh, do that. No, that's great, Bucky. Somebody else, you got a question or even a hack, something that you're doing, a tip that, that's been really, really good, something that's been a win for you and your team during this time. Yep. Yeah, come up here. Yep, we got, we got three minutes. Well, that's until the online community shuts off, which we do value you. Come back next year, you get the after party and all that stuff. All right, here you go. So just something that has worked well for us from the church plant perspective. I'm, my name is Kaylee. I'm with Converge Community. We're a brand new church plant. We had our very first meeting last week of January 2020. Come on. Promptly, COVID knocked us on our butts. Had to figure out, all right, how do you take a launch team of 50 people and keep them going? All of that stuff. I think one of the coolest ways that we found um, to keep people engaged is not just having somebody to moderate comments. We do largely Facebook, Facebook Live. That's, our, that's where most people are tuning in. Um, but we've got our team at home, people who, due to COVID reasons, are not leaving home. They are our dedicated at-home people. They're moderating, but they're also communicating to somebody who's at the in-person service, who is going up and reading questions out loud, who is reading prayers that people are typing in the Facebook comments. And it's given our people a way to actually engage in the service itself um, with us. So those of us who are there in person, leading, preaching, doing music, all of that, we've got people at home and there's an intercessor there that's, hey, we're, we're filling you guys in. And they're, they're hearing, they're seeing their questions on the screen, they're hearing their prayers being read on the live stream. And it's a cool way to take that one step further. Big churches probably don't have that option, but if you're a smaller church, try it out. It's been really good for our team. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, we got two minutes, just 120 seconds. Somebody else, give me a, a hack, uh, uh, something you do, something that has gone well. Yes, yes. Watch, uh, watch back your live stream like it's game film and see what you can fix. Yeah, so he said watch your live stream, yep, yep. like it's game film to see what you can fix. Now, some of you, you're going to take that overboard, right? <laughs> no, be gracious. He's, he's, he's saying that. We're, I'm reading his mind. Um, but seriously, watch, watch what you do. Watch what you do and how you can do that. Hey, um, we are love to keep this conversation going, but I'm just going to pray for us just to um, honor you and your time. If you want to stay, stick around for a little bit, let us know, okay? Let me pray. Father, we, we love you. Jesus, we truly do adore you. Holy Spirit, we desperately need you. God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters who are here to serve you. 
I ask you to empower them to do what only you want to do. God, we believe we're doing your will and that you care about it. So ultimately, it's you who must build your church. And we live and breathe off that promise. Teach us again how to abide in you, to give the fruit that only glorifies you, and help us shepherd, love, and disciple those that you have put under our care. It's in Christ's name that we pray. And everyone said, amen. Amen. Hey, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you.